Hello, welcome to Ottawa City Hall. I'm John Willing with Post Media political columnist David Reevely talking about the municipal political issues of the day. And David, there is a big piece of news out of Toronto today with the Ford government and the Court of Appeal. Tell us what happened there. Yeah, uh, as we speak, they're figuring out exactly what this means in Toronto, where uh, the Court of uh, Ontario Court of Appeal has imposed a stay on that order saying that it was unconstitutional for the Ford government to monkey with Toronto's municipal election. We're cutting the number of seats from 47 to 25. Judge struck that down, said it interfered with people's freedom of expression. Government appealed, and now a uh, three-judge panel of the Court of Appeal has said, no, actually that original judgment was an error, so the provincial government gets to do what it wants. And that has some pretty big implications in uh, municipal politics generally. Yeah, what are people uh, talking about in Ottawa? What are people afraid of in these walls in this building? Well, this is the thing. Uh, Doug Ford cares about Toronto a lot more than he seems to care about Toronto in the, the micro level. He was a city councillor there. He had the sense that uh, what they do at Toronto City Hall was, was dysfunctional and that the solution was to cut the number of councillors. Uh, it turns out the province can just do that. And in fact, uh, Doug Ford and his government chose to do that in the middle of an election campaign that was already on, uh, which just threw the whole thing higgledy-piggledy. There were you know, a bunch of seats people were running for no longer exist. The school boards have to change their plans because their trustee zones are all different. And what the, uh, the Court of Appeal ruled today was that might be unfair, it might be bad policy, they're, they're putting that aside. It's not unconstitutional. And governments, once they're elected, have an enormous amount of freedom to do what they want. And in Ontario, that means that the provincial government can, if it chooses to, cut the size of any city council apparently at any time. We've had assurances from Lisa McLeod, who's the local senior minister in the Ontario government, that that's not something that they have any plans to do, but it's something that they could do. And for cities which have spent many, many years arguing that they should be taken more seriously and respected more by senior governments, that was a, that's a real body blow. Uh, do you think the, the Ford government would have any interest in doing this in Ottawa at all? It's impossible to say. I mean, it's a government that's fairly unpredictable. Uh, you, you don't know what they're going to do. I do think, as I say, that Doug Ford has a particular interest in Toronto. Uh, McLeod has made the argument for why Ottawa has about the right number of city councillors. So I don't think it's likely, but the fact that it's even possible has people very upset. Uh, which actually, things that are even possible, having people very upset, takes us to the thing that uh, you want to talk about, which is the delay to the city's LRT system, which has really been the big news uh, d delivered in this room about a week and a half ago. Yeah, and in fact, there was a transit commission meeting earlier on Wednesday that talked about fares and the transit system, and the LRT delay that was announced recently was a big part of that. We still don't know when the LRT system will be ready in Ottawa. You remember, the handover date was supposed to be November 2nd, and then Rideau Transit Group proposed November 30th. The city has no confidence in that November 30th date. So if you're a fair paying customer, if you're a taxpayer of the city, you're wondering when is City Hall gonna deliver the LRT system? The city seems to think it's gonna be early 2019, but it, nothing's in stone. Mm -hmm. And that's what we saw around the Transit Commission table today is just a lot of uncertainty, and especially when it comes to the bus routes too. Remember mm -hmm. that Transpo had to adjust some of the bus routes this month to get ready for LRT. There's about a dozen routes in particular that they had to adjust, thinking that LRT was gonna launch in November, but a lot of people are, are losing some of their service. You know, Route 11 comes up a lot. It's been squeezed at, at the endpoints, and now is trying to figure out how to, what they call, tweak some of the routes. They won't reverse the route, route changes, but they'll tweak some of the routes maybe in the coming weeks. Where does Route 11 go? Route 11 goes through the central west part of the city. So it used to go between Bayshore Shopping Center and the Rideau Center. Now it's shortened. It actually doesn't go as far as the Rideau Center at the eastern point. It stops at Elgin Street. So if you want to take a bus to the Rideau Center and you're taking the 11, you have to get off at Elgin Street and hike it a few blocks over to, uh, to the Rideau Center. And counselors like Catherine McKenney and Jeff Leeper, they don't like that. They want Transpo to reinstate the 11 so it goes to the Rideau Center. You know, all, all of this happens in the central part of the, the city, David, where Le Breton Flats is, and a lot of people are eager about the redevelopment on the flats. So what are you hearing there? 
Well, this is the other, the other big city story, I think, this week, uh, which is there was a meeting of the National Capital Commission board. They do those in public, uh, as they have for a few years. And Mark Crispensen, who's the CEO, says they're reaching kind of a pivot point with the LeBreton Flats development. They've been negotiating with uh, Rendezvous LeBreton, the group led by the Ottawa Senators, for more than two years now, and they're, they're coming up to some final decisions uh, in November. And it seems that people are getting pretty impatient for that to get resolved one way or another. There's this poll that came out uh, done on behalf of the Ottawa Board of Trade telling, saying people really want the NCC and the Senators and Eugene Melnick to get this thing done. Uh, to the point where if Melnick is dragging his heels, which was the premise of the poll, then people, a majority of people are ready for the Ottawa business community to step in, even to have the NHL step in and do something uh, if this thing can't get done. You know, I, I find there's a parallel in a way between the LeBreton Flats project and the LRT project. A lot of planning is happening behind closed doors. We're, we're not hearing a lot from the Rideau Transit Group when it comes to LRT. And on the LeBreton side, we only get piecemeal information from the NCC. And do you find that people want to know more about what's going on behind the scenes or they just want this thing built? I, well, I think when things aren't happening, then people want to know why. The, uh, the LRT system is late. People want a, a sound explanation for it. And we haven't had that from RTG, from the builders. The Breton Flats seems like it's been going on for an awfully long time. I think this is just a monumentally complicated project. It takes an awfully long time to sort out all these fine details. The future of the Ottawa Senators uh, really is at stake over getting this, this move right. And so it, it's hugely complicated. Doing it right takes time. Rushing it is a bad idea. If we make a deal just to make a deal, I think we're going to end up with garbage. But when the stuff takes a long time, this is public land. The LRT is a huge public project. There's tons of public money involved. People want to see inside. They want to know what's going on. So those are some of the hot issues uh, in municipal politics and at City Hall. Join us again next time where we run through the big issues of the day.